Hello and welcome back to iSpy and I'm back here with a new video in a series of lens and cataract lectures and after classification of cataract in this series we'll talk about congenital cataract so let's start but before getting into causes and types of congenital cataract let's understand the difference between congenital and developmental cataract congenital and developmental cataract occurs due to some disturbance in the normal growth of the lens but if i talk about congenital and developmental cataract individually then what is congenital and what is developmental cataract so any and every type of cataract is developmental cataract because a cataract that develops at any stage of the lens development is developmental cataract so what i want to say is when lens is developing and if some disturbance occurs in the normal growth of the lens and leads to opacification in the lens then we call it as developmental cataract and because developmental cataract occurs for a moment only or at a certain point of time so it affects the particular zone which is being formed when the process is disturbed and the fibers surrounding that zone are often normally formed and remain clear now what is congenital cataract so i would say congenital cataract is simply a subtype of developmental cataract let's understand this with example so for example opacification of fetal nucleus occurs when the fetal nucleus fibers were developing so now because opacification occurred during development of fibers we will call it as developmental cataract but the point to note here is that fetal nucleus forms before birth and when the baby born he she is already having cataract so we call it congenital cataract also because of the definition of term congenital that stands for the uh, conditions that present since birth so congenital cataract is one which is present since birth or a sub type of developmental cataract so uh, let's move towards the congenital cataract and as we have already discussed that congenital cataracts are the ones that is present since birth so we'll start with etiological causes of congenital cataract and that can be divided into three parts in which one third is hereditary and most of it has autosomal dominance inheritance the next one third is idiopathic that is uh, we are not sure about the cause the last one third is have uh, other causes which can be maternal causes and fetal causes let's talk about both so maternal causes include maternal infections and these infections are torch group of infections where t stands for toxoplasmosis O for others, R for rubella, C for cytomegalovirus, H for herpes, and we should always screen a pregnant woman for these infections because these infections can lead to congenital cataract. And out of all these, rubella is the most important infection because it contributes to about 50% of the congenital cataracts. Next in maternal causes is. maternal malnutrition in which for cataract point of view important is vitamins vitamin b c and e that we have already discussed in lens physiology that how these vitamins play role of antioxidant to prevent degeneration or opacification of lens next is maternal drugs ingestion so there are some drugs noted for causing cataract in child if it is taken by mother during pregnancy and these drugs are steroids and thalidomide now under maternal causes are uh, radiation exposure that means if mother is exposed to radiations especially x rays during pregnancy it may lead to congenital cataract now let's discuss fetal causes and that can be remember by a b c and d in which a for anoxia or hypoxia that is deficiency of oxygen and in physiology of lens we have seen that in absence or deficiency of oxygen anaerobic metabolism takes place which is responsible for the formation of free radicals and free radicals leads to aging and aging is the major factor for causing cataract so this is how anoxia or hypoxia can cause cataract next is b and b is for birth trauma and birth trauma is a general term used to describe any cuts fractures or any other injuries sustained by a newborn baby during labor or delivery so if any of these reach to eye of the baby may lead to cataract now c c is for congenital anomalies which can cause cataract are down syndrome low syndrome and alport syndrome 
last under fetal causes is d and d is for disorders that is meant by metabolic disorders which can also cause cataract are galactosemia galactokinase deficiency hypocalcemia and hypoglycemia now let's talk about the types of congenital cataracts and in the list of congenital cataract most common is blue dot cataract now why blue dot because in this cataract opacities uh, appears in blue color and scattered throughout the lens as a small small dots that's why uh, it is also known as punctate cataract or cataracta punctata ceruli yes ceruli also means deep sky blue color opacities in blue dot cataract are stationary or non progressive means they are not going to progress further and also visually insignificant so not going to affect vision also and doesn't require surgery one more thing about this punctate cataract is this uh, is associated with down syndrome now next uh, is actually a subtype of this blue dot cataract and we call it as sutural cataract what happens here is when the opacity is crowded in the y shaped suture in the fetal nucleus of the lens then we call it as a sutural cataract and this is also stationary not going to progress and not going to affect vision also so visually insignificant now next under congenital cataract is cataracta centralis pulverulenta this is an embryonic nucleus cataract having fine powdery opacities lying exactly in the center of the lens and usually most of these are non progressive and does not affect vision now next in the list of congenital cataracts are zonular or lamellar cataract now again by its name zonular means particular zone and a lamellar means some particular layers so zonular cataract is which is present in a particular zone or layers generally involves fetal nucleus of the lens this is the most common congenital or developmental cataract which is most visually significant means it affects vision and it is usually bilateral so remember one point here is that there are two things that one is most common congenital cataract which is blue dot cataract but visually insignificant that does not going to affect vision and the second is most common congenital cataract which affects vision then it will be zonular cataract now if i talk about etiology of zonular cataract then it is associated with congenital rubella syndrome vitamin d deficiency autosomal dominant inheritance hypocalcemia and hypothyroidism now let's see clinical features of zonular cataract or how it presents so it presents as a central opacity with a clear zone internally and externally around it because as i told you it involves fetal nucleus then it leaves embryonic nucleus internally and cortex externally around it transparent or clear and the special feature it has there is a spokes like linear opacities comes out from central opaque zone towards the equator and that linear opacities are known as riders and gives uh, the appearance of a cartwheel next is anterior capsular and polar cataract and as per its name the opacity is localized or limited to anterior pole and capsule surrounding that of the lens but sometimes involves uh, most superficial cortex also and based on that anterior polar cataract can occur in the following morphological patterns in which very first can be the formation of thick white plaque in the center of the lens capsule and another pattern that can occur is sometimes that white plaque or thickened opacity in the center of lens capsule projects forwards into the anterior chamber like a pyramid and we call it as anterior pyramidal cataract and third variation in anterior capsular and polar cataract can occur is reduplicated cataract now i why is this known as reduplicated because sometimes what happened along with the thickening of center anterior lens capsule uh, the lens fibers lying immediately beneath it also becomes opaque 
and when new fibers form that lies in between capsular and cortical opacity and separate these two opacities that results into look like duplicate copy of each other and then this whole combination is known as reduplicated cataract. Let's see how these opacities arise. So it can occur due to delayed development of anterior chamber. Then it can be due to corneal perforation in ophthalmia and neonaturum where a uh, lens capsule comes in contact with the cornea and le leaves as an opacification of central anterior lens capsule. And it can be due to Peter's anomaly because there is a delayed separation of lens placode from surface ectoderm. Now last point that I want to mention under anterior capsule and polar cataract is that these opacities usually are non-progressive and rarely interfere with vision. Next type of congenital cataract is posterior capsular and polar cataract. And by its name this is very clear the opacity is at the posterior pole and posterior capsule of the lens and appears as a uh, onion ring or whorl. It can be stationary and progressive both uh, and associated with mittened off dot that is remnants of uh, persistent hyaloid artery, posterior lenticonus and persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. Now uh, next is total congenital cataract or we call it rubella cataract. So when I say rubella then it is very clear that this cataract is because of rubella infection and to be very specific it is due to maternal rubella infection acquired during first trimester and child is born with this rubella cataract uh, which involves uh, fetal nucleus and pearly whiten appearance and it is progressive type of cataract so if it is not extracted it will progress with time. And uh, now, so this is all from my side about congenital cataract in the series of lens and cataract videos. Uh, next, we'll discuss about age-related or senile cataract in the upcoming video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, comment and subscribe.